I've been going to the Cape for about 40 years now. We go fishing, my wife loves to fish. We do shell fishing, oystering and clamming. We just spend a lot of time on the water, in and around the water. I served on the Waterways and Shellfish Committee. But we advise on how to improve the waterways, how to improve the shell fishing. Of course, both of those things have been deteriorating over the years. I used to be very active. Uh, I used to be able to just go out and catch fish. It's called Bass River because the striped bass would come up here. One time, the beaches would crawl with lobsters. I mean, there were native oyster beds all over. If you wanted to eat, you could literally go and pick it up off the beaches. If you look back at some of the old photos, you'll see that there weren't even houses along the riverbank. Now, all the houses around here, bordering the river, have septic tanks. So what happens then is that the overflow from that eventually ends up in the river. And it creates algae growth, which is detrimental to shellfish. It's so sad that we should just damage the place where we live. We will lose the things that make Cape Cod, Cape Cod. And if we lose that, we're nothing more than just a pile of sand. I'm Erica Smith, and I'm the program manager at the Massachusetts Oyster Project. For folks out here who, who are like, oh, I don't eat seafood, it's kind of like when you're on the Cape, you, you just, everyone, you're, you are so close. And whether it's your neighbor, yourself, or two doors down, someone is involved with aquaculture. It's obviously an island, right, surrounded by water, and then all the old kettle ponds and estuaries, and you have the rivers. And so if you look at it on a map, then you're gonna see that the water flows and it's all connected. So everything you do basically impacts the water. The Massachusetts Oyster Project, we're a nonprofit. We've been around for over 10 years, and we're really focused on getting oysters back into the water for natural habitat restoration of our coastal waters. There's lots of different programs that we've started, and one of our major ones here on the Cape is shell recycling. Shells are basically considered trash in most instances in a restaurant, and there's no value in that. They actually can go back in the water where they came from because they add value to the waters. You know, we have all of our restaurant partners. They don't want oyster shells to go in the trash, and they want to be able to tell their customers when the customers ask, where do you get your oysters? Because everybody wants to know what oyster they're eating and what do you do with your shells? And so now restaurants can say, we give them back, we recycle them, and they're used for habitat. Restaurant puts them in one of our buckets, puts it outside, we pick it up in the morning, put it at the transfer station, it ages for a year, then the town puts it back in the water. This pile is eventually going to Wellfleet Harbor's Culch, so the shellfish department, they load it up, put it on the barge, and spray it basically out into the um, approved waters to put on the bottom 
and substrate. To set up, say, a native oyster field, you need a bed of shells because they only spawn on top of shells. If they just sink into the mud, they're going to die. We want to recycle them into the river, we want to recycle it and, and generate the growth of the oysters. When Julian reached out to Mass Oyster, it put sort of Yarmouth and the Bass River in sight, and that's really what got the ball rolling. Especially here on the Cape, but in most coastal water, there's problems with pollution, and we have great protected land. But the use of fertilizer, just that little bit of what you're using in your lawn, it doesn't matter, it's going into the water. People want to see improvement, and there's only so many ways to do that. And one of the ways is oysters. So one of the nice things about this mass oyster project is that there's this educational component to it. And I contacted them, but it was Cassandra who did all the follow-up, and she put the whole thing together. My name is Cassandra Healy. I'm currently the Yarmouth Shellfish Constable for the Division of Natural Resources. My primary set of roles is actually just to monitor, protect, and preserve the natural shellfish habitats in town. I chose to partner with Mass Oyster Project because they do a really great duty explaining through fun education, interactive engagement with shellfish. And it's a, just a great way for people to understand how important shellfish is in the community. The reason that we're looking at these various opportunities to create the positive impact on the water quality is because if it's something that we sweep under the rug now, it's only going to lead to more drastic negative effects later. Things like algae blooms can affect shellfish directly. It can affect humans. It can affect the vegetation. It gets the landscape and habitat out of balance. And if we don't pay attention to it and try to implement some changes now, it can unfortunately destroy our entire ocean ecosystem. So if you look through this room, these are basically the moms and dads of all the oyster babies that get sold on Cape Cod. It's called the broodstock room. So these oysters are selected for favorable genetics and they crossbreed them to try to get the most hardiest shellfish baby to be able to sell and pass on. This is one of the coolest rooms. Is this your algae room? It is, yeah. yeah. So this is ARC's algae lab. ARC it stands for Aquacultural Research Corporation, and they're one of the only hatcheries on Cape Cod. They do everything from spawning the shellfish to actually having their own farms working out on the water themselves. So this room is basically the baby incubator stage. I always refer to oysters as environmental powerhouses. They're resilient. They're very adaptable to their environment. They can actually live in a variety of salinity levels, so they can be found in places you wouldn't even expect to find them. So the reason we worked with Mass Oyster Project and our primary focus to clean the water with oysters is because they can actually filter up to 50 gallons of water a day for a single adult oyster. So if you maximize that and put it on a broader scale with a reef of oysters, they're actually doing a lot of good work. Oh my gosh, there's so many oyster shells. It is a full circle recycling project. We're using oysters to grow more oysters. There's nothing better than that. This project is really special. It's the first time Mass Oyster Project has both an upweller and a shell recycling program in the same town. People don't know what upweller means. 
right? So we're, we put Oyster Nursery. Yarmouth will be our seventh upweller. So they go on a dock and they're buckets, silos that grow baby oysters. It's pulling in the water. We have its pump system that feeds the oysters and they grow. And then those oysters will be put back into the Bass River in an area that they won't be touched. So they'll be able to grow up, reproduce, and so they'll create their own oyster bed. Hopefully, they'll all survive and then continue to grow that, and that will help to cleanse the water. The reason people use these methods is because it's a lot safer to have the baby shellfish in a tank than out in the ocean. It just keeps them safe from predators. So they grow very fast, filtering out that water and getting all the nutrients they need. Here on the Cape, we've been successful so far with shell recycling, with our upwellers, and as we continue to expand, my hope is starting more programs so it says, oh, well, Wealthy can do it, Yarmouth can do it, well, why can't we do it? What's holding us back? And so it's sort of that momentum, and I think we can continue that. One of the goals of our upwiller programs in general, being that they're educational, is that we want them to be in a high traffic area so that there's the opportunity for folks passing by to engage and be able to learn and say, oh, what's that? When I'm out there at these community events, the questions go all over the place, which is great, but it just goes to show people are interested and they want to learn more. For change to happen, something has to be real and recognizable. And in order to do that, you sort of have to be a part of what's going on. And that's why I think if you can feel something and it has an impact on you directly, then you can understand it. And for anything to succeed, you have to start there as a community to move forward, you have to be all in.